A lot of noise is being made in the yachting industry. It is so loud that it has become impossible to ignore. Unusually though, the noise has not come as a result of expensive advertising campaigns or outrageous claims and promises. The noise has come simply by a new brand arriving on the scene and selling a lot of yachts. Ironically, the name of the brand making all of this commotion is Silent Yachts. Silent Yachts were certainly too loud for me to ignore. Even before I published a video about them, viewers were writing to me to ask for information about the company. And then when I did mention them in a video, the comment section below was full of questions from viewers who wanted to know more. Now this level of interest is easy to understand. Silent Yachts are pioneering the use of solar energy to power luxury catamarans and the yacht buying public love what they are doing. At the Cannes Yacht Show this year, I took the opportunity to meet Michael Kohler, the co-founder of the company, and get a few more details about the concept behind the company. If you haven't seen that interview yet, there'll be a link to it at the end of this video. During the conversation, we spoke about the fact that he would be building their largest ever model, the Silent 80 in Ancona, Italy, and we agreed that this could be a wonderful opportunity to document the construction of this yacht through my YouTube channel. Something we didn't talk about though was the story behind Michael and his wife Heike, who are passionate sailors and have spent over 6,000 days on their yachts and navigated more than 75,000 nautical miles around the world. In their pursuit to find a more efficient energy supply for yachts, they built a test catamaran and they used it for trials and improvements over a five-year period, covering around 15,000 nautical miles. The catamaran, called Solar Wave 46, went on to become the world's first fully self-sufficient blue water catamaran, and it was the starting point for the Silent Yachts range. And so that brings me to here, in Italy's wonderful and picturesque region of Le Marche, where we pick up the story in an area called Marotta Mondolfo. To be fair, this is not the most picturesque part of Le Marche because along with the region's beautiful rolling landscapes and incredible cuisine, of course there are industrial areas too. And the yacht building industry is a big contributor to the economy of the region. This company, for example, builds large composite components such as hulls and superstructures for many of Italy's top yacht builders, so they were a great choice to make the main composite components for the first Silent 80. On my first visit to the shipyard, I met Cristiano Mariani, who's the general manager for the project, and he showed me one half of the deck mould for the yacht. Now, as you can imagine, a mould that is almost 36 feet wide is pretty difficult to transport by road, so it's split into two pieces. And here, I could see the process of the various layers of fiberglass and resin being laid onto the mould and left to harden in a vacuum bag, so that absolutely no air voids will be present in the finished piece. This is a tried and tested technique that was pioneered by the Pershing shipyard, also from Marotta Mondolfo. And you can be sure that hulls that are strong enough for high powered and high performance yachts like Pershing's should certainly be a good fit for the rather more peaceful use that a solar powered catamaran is likely to get. And while the decks are already in an advanced stage of production, Cristiano showed me the hulls that have already been removed from their moulds and are ready to be joined. You can see the points at which the two pieces will be bolted together, but of course, on top of that, several layers of composite material will be added so that the two separate units become inseparably married together. The engineers who draw up the hull layup program aim to make the point that where the two pieces are joined together, 
will be the strongest part of the yacht rather than the weakest for obvious reasons. And the hulls will need to bear quite some weight too. The plan is for the port hull to contain the yacht's tender, while the starboard hull will have enough space for jet skis if the owner so desires. Further forward there will be guest accommodation and there's a variety of layouts available that we'll look at in future videos. For now though let's move just a few miles south from Morata Mondolfo to the coastal city of Ancona where many of Italy's most impressive and successful yacht builders can be found. Now at this point I should explain to you that whilst silent yachts own the brand, the designs and the technology of each model, they collaborate mostly with German and Italian designers and naval architects to find the best people to actually build the yacht. In the case of the Silent 80 that we'll be featuring in this series of videos, they selected the Consortio Navale di Ancona, a consortium of companies that supply vital products and services to the yacht building industry. These people have decades of experience of building yachts to a very high level indeed. On my visit to Silent Yachts, Cristiano showed me this huge building as being earmarked to receive the hulls and superstructures of the Silent 80 model and to fit them out ready for launch and delivery. The building was very familiar to me since years ago during my time working at the CRN shipyard, we used this same factory to build the mould of the custom line Navetta 43 meter. Now a large portion of this same area shall be dedicated to building the Silent 80 range of catamarans. Cristiano was telling me that there's still a lot of work to be done here. Those doors, for example, need to be widened so that an 80 foot catamaran can pass through them. It seems to me to be a very safe investment though. Already silent yachts have sold the first four units of that 80 foot model and they've committed to building the first five. If I sound amazed by that, it's because I really am. So many yacht builders think up beautiful yachts, go ahead and build them, and then struggle to get them sold in spite of the fact that the yacht itself is very well built. Here though, is a brand that nobody had heard of not long ago, but that's announcing sale after sale after sale, in spite of the fact that they don't have an eye-watering marketing budget. The reason for this, in my opinion, is that Michael and Heike Kohler didn't go about trying to create a niche in the market that they believed existed, driven by a desire for commercial success. It was the market itself that was crying out so loudly for environmentally friendly solutions to yachting. And they, as consumers themselves, felt that cry within themselves so loudly, they were motivated to do something about it. The commercial success has come as a byproduct of them listening to what the market wants. In future videos, we'll be looking at the progress that they make with that first Silent 80 as the hulls and the superstructure arrives here in Ancona. But we'll also be taking a closer look at how Silent Yachts harness that solar energy to power an 80-foot luxury catamaran. So that, as they say in their promotional material, the only footprints that the owner leaves are in the sand.